Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, I do have some three questions. My first question is, uh, why do you think have you preferred uh, to launch such attacks uh, in the southern front while uh, diplomatic efforts to resolve uh, the problem peacefully were underway? Uh, secondly, uh, in the meantime, it was reportedly told that uh, Abiy has ordered its uh, Eastern Command to cross borders and join Eritrean forces. So what does that imply? Uh, my last question is, as to uh, different analysis, uh, the way the international community uh, handled the case of Tigray uh, has failed. As to them, uh, the international community m is more focusing on treating uh, Abiy Ahmed's regime or uh, the Prime Minister himself in a special manner. What is your stand in this regard? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, my first question is uh, regarding Saturday's statement by the Tigray Military Command, uh, which uh, stated that it, the Tigray Army neutralized the logical offensive launched by Ethiopian forces. What was the aim of this wide-ranging offensive? And uh, my second question is, uh, there are accusations that uh, uh, coming from the Ethiopian government that TPLF is only responsible for the eruption of hostilities. Uh, who do you think is standing in the way of this? And the international community is also condemning the eruption of hostilities, condemning the eruption of hostilities and calling for the um, cessation of hostilities immediately. And what is the possibility and the likelihood that these hostilities will be stopped soon? And my last question is regarding WF's chief David Batley's accusation to your government. Um, he said that your government has stolen fuel tankers belonging to the World Food Program. And uh, to the extent of your affairs office has issued a statement that allegations were baseless and uh, the WP needs to, to correct it, its error. And have you settled your difference with WFP? The Ethiopian government conducted an airstrike on kindergarten and children's playground in Magala and soon after released a statement claiming that it will take all necessary measures and uh, attack military bases and ask civilians to refrain from such areas yet the attack was conducted on a residential area. Uh, what is your say on this matter, and if there are any updates on the number of casualties? Uh, my second question is that on Wednesday, the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian government authorities have issued incoherent statements claiming that they have uh, donned an aircraft crossing Ethiopian borders to de deliver weaponry to Tigray, which uh, Tigray External Affairs Office said that it was a false claim issued to lay fertile ground to conduct aerial bombardments on Tigray and ask the international community to prevail on Ethiopian government to refrain from attacking civilians. Can we say that the international community has failed the people of Tigray? And uh, my last question is, as uh, he mentioned, that you have written on Twitter that the elements of uh, the Ethiopian forces have joined the Eritrean forces to hold joint attacks on Tigray. Is there any alarming danger coming from it? Thank you. Well, with regard to why Abi decided to launch the offensive on the 24th of uh, August, I can't really say why, because uh, ultimately this is going to be, uh, this is better addressed by the very people who, launch, uh, who launches the offensive in the first place. But uh, there are probable causes why uh, Abi decided. Uh, to launch an offensive uh, on the 24th, and more importantly, why in the south? Uh, for one thing, uh, despite uh, their uh, co continued shifting of the goalposts when it comes to their commitment for negotiations, Abi and company were able to hoodwink the international community into believing that they probably were serious about uh, peace although everything they have done belies uh, such an assumption on the part of the international community. Uh, but they felt that uh, they have secured enough 
قالب الانترناشنال كوميونيتي سبورت تو جيت اواي وذ اني اني كالكيليتد ريسك اوف لونشينج ان اوفنسيف That's one one thing because they have never been interested in peace anyway. I mean, company have essentially uh, been preaching for peace, not because they are interested in peace, but more importantly because they want to appear to be interested in peace. To the extent that there was readiness on the part of Abi's government to 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 talk about peace, it was mostly for the purpose of uh, diplomatic and uh, media consumption. Uh, so, uh, yes, it's one thing to be interested in peace, to be genuinely interested in peace, but it's entirely different to be interested in the whole process of negotiations which would help you buy time, which would help you uh, put your enemies on a very defensive position. Tigray uh, is under siege. The government uh, would have to answer Uh, for all the calamities they uh, the visited upon it, some people. Uh, its forces uh, will be uh, raising all kinds of uh, difficult questions. Why they are not allowed to liberate their, their uh, uh, people in their entirety, while they can. Uh, people will be asking all kinds of questions, and that will put pressure on the leadership Uh, and in the meantime, in the absence of action or in the absence of uh, any meaningful uh, peace process, the, the Tigrayan defense forces will start disintegrating. That's the thinking behind it. Because we have uh, been gathering intelligence reports uh, that they were counting on the possibility of Tigrayan forces disintegrating uh, in the event of uh, anything meaningful not happening. Uh, as a result of the peace process. Um, so they thought they, this was an opportune, opportune moment for them to launch an attack. And second, as you know, on the 15th of uh, uh, August, uh, a well-orchestrated uh, shelling targeted our positions in Western Tigray. Uh, it turns out we had to wait two more days, three more days, to... Uh, prove whether this was a freak uh, incident or a premeditated pre decision on the part of the military top press in Al Sabab. And it turned out it was a premeditated uh, action on the part of the uh, military and civilian uh, top leadership in Al Sabab. So technically, we knew uh, the cessation of hostilities agreement was breached, but because of our commitment for, uh, for the continuation of the cessation of hostilities agreement, we decided to, to hold fire. Uh, in fact, we didn't respond in kind. Uh, as it turned out, the chief of staff of the Ethiopian National Defense Forces uh, was wondering why uh, we, would not, we would not be content with responding fire by fire rather than engaging in, a, in a, an all-out engagement. I don't know what that means militarily. I don't know what that means even uh, whether it makes any sense uh, semantically. Uh, so they were sharing our positions. The fact that we didn't share our positions was about avoiding uh, breakup of hostilities. But uh, Brahano Jula is wondering why we didn't settle for just responding in kind rather than escalating. We didn't escalate in the first place. But uh, Nine days later, Abi and Brahan Jula know that most of our forces were concentrated around Western Tigray for obvious reasons. So while we have been very consistent about for our demand for peace, uh, we also knew that uh, in the event of a breakdown of uh, such arrangements, we we'll would we'll be forced to fight in Western Tigray and liberate uh, Western Tigray. We have never been interested in Amhara territory. We have never been interested in uh, Afar territory. That's why uh, five, six months ago, we decided uh, to withdraw from those areas. So would, that would give uh, peace an opportunity. So it would be foolhardy for us to expect an offensive 
uh, from the south, and most of our forces were concentrated in, in the west, and they know that. So they were giving a signal that they were trying to launch an offensive in the west. They still are ready to launch an offensive in the west, we know that, uh, probably in courts with the, uh, the regime in Asmara. Uh, and so when they launched the, the offensive, it was, I wouldn't say it did, it did come as a surprise in the sense that we knew they would be looking for an opportune moment to attack, but it came as a surprise because that's not the kind of uh, direction they are offensive, we, we expected they are offensive to take. So uh, we defended our positions for about two days, two and a half, two and a half, day, half days, and uh, we were able to uh, check with them. Uh, so they probably thought uh, our uh, defense, defense, def defense uh, lines were thinner in the south, and that they uh, that would uh, put them in a better position to march all the way uh, on Magala you know, easily. Probably, but ultimately, the right answer could only be gleaned from them, and they are the ones who know why they did what they did. Uh, but they launched it. They launched an offensive. We defend our position for two consecutive days. And the uh, afternoon of the third day, we were able to uh, effectively resist their, their uh, offensive. And we uh, set out to, to launch a counter-offensive. The rest, as they say, history. And um, most of Northern Wolo now, as we speak, uh, is... Uh, a significant portion of Northern Wolo is in, under our hands, uh, under uh, our, our forces. Uh, we're not particularly interested in controlling this area or that area, but as long as uh, the forces uh, that were unleashed against us are ready uh, to threaten the safety and security of our people, we'll continue to take appropriate measures to neutralize that threat. Whether neutralizing that threat would take us to to some part of Amhara or Afar is an entirely different matter. Uh, uh, but it looks like uh, we cannot uh, uh, simply count on the international community uh, to rein in Abi and his war dogs uh, for our safety and security, obviously. We have to still depend on our forces. Uh, not only to neutralize the threat, but to, 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 to continue to keep guard against uh, similar threats, whether they come uh, from the north, from the south, from the east, whatever. So what transpired uh, uh, in that engagement was they first deployed uh, the Amhara Special Force Divisions uh, very close to our defense lines. And they knew uh, that would provoke us into, uh, into responding. Uh, we didn't. By the way, I have to call attention of, uh, call attention of our uh, uh, friends, our partners alike, that there was an incident about two months ago which involved a, small, a very large contingent of Amhara Special Forces uh, that tried to attack our positions in the southwestern part of Raya. Uh, we uh, took care of that unit, but the National Defense Forces uh, contingents followed uh, probably in, uh, in their support, and we engaged them, and uh, thanks to the engagement between uh, the commander of our uh, forces uh, and uh, the chief of staff, we were able to avert a full-scale hostility. In fact, one of the things we agreed to do was to withdraw from that particular area so would not, uh, would not uh, give the Amhara Special Force an excuse to, to provoke us again. And this was a very strategic position. And we took it back uh, yesterday, the, the day before yesterday, but we had handed over that very strategic position to the National Defense Forces because it was uh, that decision we believed was uh, going to be in the best interest of peace itself. Uh, that uh, the Abbey and company were really genuine about, uh, not genuine about peace, at least they were ready for negotiations, okay? So we knew what uh, we are capable of doing, but at least 
uh, the international community uh, needed to be reassured that we're not uh, just a bunch of trigger happy people who would shoot at every every in, any incident that uh, that involves uh, shooting uh, because we knew the people of Tigray uh, deserve peace and we knew every day that we spend in peace uh, will be in the best interest of the people of Tigray we need food aid not because the people of Tigray were not able to feed themselves but simply because our enemies imposed uh, a situation that has made it almost impossible for the people of Tigray to survive without food aid okay so at least that 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 would give us enough reason to uh, to tolerate any sim you know simple provocations from here and there and uh, but they launched an offensive they launched an offensive and it was something of a surprise in the sense that uh, uh, the the kind of uh, exchange of ideas we had with their top brass was that they should remove the Amhara Special Forces, because they, 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 they are likely to, to engage in provo provocative activities. But it turned out it was the 6th and 8th command, very huge command, uh, with, with uh, some of the most experienced uh, infantry and mechanized units uh, Abiy Hamad has, uh, launched the offensive on the 24th of uh, early morning, 24th of uh, August. Uh, I will come back to the question of uh, why the international community, uh, what it has done and whether it has failed us. Uh, but I will, I will, I will address the, the second question, which is what the objective of our uh, Tigray Defense Forces is uh, in, in this particular uh, this is not a, a campaign. By the way, if you notice, you, we, don't, we don't even have a name for the campaign because it's not a campaign we initiated. Uh, it was a campaign imposed on us. So we have been defending our positions and now we are in counter-offensive and like, like I said, uh, we have taken over uh, most of the territory uh, because the, the six and A's and the Southern Command units are in absolute disarray. We have taken thousands of people as prisoners of war uh, we have captured material uh, and all, all those things. But we're not particularly interested in this or that territory. As long as there is a threat, whether that threat comes uh, from uh, Bahrar or from Samara uh, is secondary, as far as we're concerned. We have to neutralize it, and it was imposed on us. Uh, and what's our objective? It's about ensuring the safety and security of the people of Tigray and making sure that every uh, territory of Tigray is back in the hands of Tigray. Uh, whether that happens peacefully or through military means is an entirely different question. But we prefer it to be done peacefully, but it's very unfortunate that uh, despite its uh, uh, sometimes lukewarm, sometimes seemingly genuine efforts to achieve uh, a peaceful resolution to the conflict, the international community has miserably fail, failed to, 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 to achieve this objective simply because it's mostly interested in coddling Abi, uh, and there is a, there is every indication that uh, the readiness to speak truth to power is conspicuously missing in the international communities' uh, repertoire of uh, negotiations efforts. But we hope, we still hope, uh, and expect the international community. Uh, to get its acts together and uh, put pressure to bear on Abiy uh, and his government so that they would come uh, back to their senses and to realize that uh, the only viable uh, choice in town is talking, not shooting. The shooting didn't work the first time around and it's not going to work this time around either. It's obvious that even they are uh, uh, highly acclaimed, highly... Uh, uh, prepped offensive in the southern front was uh, essentially broken in a matter of two days and uh, as we speak uh, our forces are uh, taking care of the retreating units uh, whether that will take us uh, where that's a different story but uh, we will continue to take care of uh, 
uh, those forces. Ultimately, they are not there to protect the people of Amhara. They were not there to protect the people of Afar. They were there uh, to make sure that the people of Tigray do not have access to food. And these are a bunch of uh, uh, trigger-happy people who shoot at women, who shoot at uh, defenseless children, uh, except that they are not in any way interested in maintaining even the territorial integrity of the country. Well, Al-Shabaab is attacking the country in different directions. Yeah, Abi doesn't, hasn't uh, deployed uh, any contingent from the National Defense Forces. And the Southern Command, the nor there is no Northern Command because Tigray is North. Uh, the Western Command, the Northwestern Command, uh, are named in, in relation to their position vis-a-vis -vis Tigray itself. So the entire Ethiopian National Defense Forces are not about defending the country from, from uh, Ethiopia's, as they say, historical enemies, uh, no matter who those historical enemies are. It's about containing Tigray. It's about starving the people of Tigray. It's about siege starving the entire population. It's very unfortunate, but it's, it's true. Uh, so as far as we're concerned, we, we have defended our positions, and we are now uh, launching a counteroffensive. Uh, Abi keeps making miscalculations after miscalculations, it keeps sending reinforcements, and we'll continue to neutralize. And that will take us probably deeper and deeper into Amhara um, region, I don't know. But that has never been our intention. That will never be our intention. But it's very unfortunate that Abi prefers the Amhara region to be the theater of war. Uh, in fact, that, uh, that raises a question why rather than sending the Eastern Command, which, which should have been in the eastern part of Tigray, uh, to, to cross the border to Eritrea. So they could coordinate their efforts with the Eritrean regime uh, and probably uh, l l launch a second or third round of uh, their genocidal campaign against Tigray. Uh, how that will turn out in practice mm, remains to be seen, but the intention obviously is clear. Abi doesn't have the slightest of intentions to defend uh, the people from Hara or the Amhara territory. Uh, so whether we like it or not, uh, as much as he wants to the Amhara people to contribute their sons and daughters in defense of a cause that does not in any way, in any way reflect their, their choices, it does not in any way promote their interests, but something that promotes the interest of Abi and uh, a few oligarchs uh, who want to profiteer from, from uh, uh, the plight of uh, the people of Amhara, and of course, obviously, the, the plight and the fate of the people of Tigray and the rest of the Ethiopian population as well. Uh, who's standing in the way of peace? Obviously, Abi is standing in the way of peace. You know, Abi uh, promised the international community that he would uh, restore services. He would uh, ensure unfettered humanitarian access, but all along, he's been obstructing unfettered humanitarian access, using all kinds of excuses, using all kinds of pretexts. And the services issue, which should not have been conditional, uh, they made it conditional. Even they had promised to the envoys who came to Malala that all they needed was our guarantee that we would not uh, attack. Uh, the very technicians would come here and open banks, fix uh, telecoms, telecommunications, fix electricity and all that as preposterous as it might sound, this was pretty much the demand that was uh, made of us. And we did oblige, uh, but uh, all of a sudden, the Abish government, uh, true to form, went back to its, its, its uh, old habit, uh, giving the, w the envoys a dress down, uh, blaming them for uh, uh, posing for selfies with uh, terrorist leaders, quote-unquote, uh, and calling TPLF leaders, you know, that's the kind of... Uh, but obviously, they didn't want to restore services. Uh, and who's standing the way of peace? Obviously, people who, despite making promises after promises to restore services, are standing in the way, publicly so, of restoration of services, are the ones who are standing in the way of peace. It doesn't require a genius to figure this out. And the offensive was launched by Abiy Ahmed because he thought that he had secured enough uh, goodwill from the international community with regard to his readiness for peace, and then whatever he does, it would be blamed for, blamed on people who have found them, uh, ourselves in a very, uh, a very awkward situation. Not act so, despite provocations in the in the in the in the West, 
despite provocations in there, here and there, we uh, had a very conscious, we had made a very conscious decision to hold our fire in the interest of peace. So, obviously, uh, uh, I don't have to explain this at length. It, the facts themselves speak for themselves. Uh, the cessation of hostilities agreement have been, I mean, you know, the UN and other organizations have been calling, the US government has been calling for immediate uh, cessation of hostilities. It's, it's good that they are calling uh, for immediate cessation of hostilities, but it also behooves them to, to, to lay the blame squarely on the culprit uh, who uh, has uh, uh, broken the cessation of hostilities uh, agreement or understanding or whatever they could, they they like to call it. Uh, obviously, the facts speak for themselves. The international community has all the facts. Uh, and uh, it is not the government of Tigray that is going to blame for launching an offensive in what appeared to be one of the thinnest defense lines that we had. Uh, but luckily for us, we were able to defend our position and then uh, engage the enemy in a counter-offensive that has proven its metal so far. The enemy has lost tens of thousands of uh, personnel, either uh, killed or wounded. Uh, we have uh, thousands, thousands and thousands of prisoners of war again. Uh, and that speaks volumes uh, of the intentions of... Uh, and now the, the Eastern Command <laughs> uncharacteristically, an Eastern Command joining the Eritrean uh, uh, forces to attack Tigray again, mm, that, for one thing, obviously shows that Abiy is not interested in defending uh, Amhara or Afar. Uh, so it's, 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 it's left to our decision then. Uh, then he wants to make sure that uh, we don't have access uh, to Sudan, we don't have access to the outside world, although he keeps blaming uh, Ethiopia's historical enemies for supporting us. I don't know who those historical enemies are. The usual suspects, of course, are Egypt and Sudan, I guess. Uh, I would say Abi has done more than anyone else to prostrate himself before uh, these authorities to do their bidding. Uh, I honestly wouldn't mind getting support from anyone as long as it helps secure uh, my people. What's unfortunate is we're not in a position to get the support because we are under a 24-7, 360 degree blockade, courtesy of Abiy Ahmed and his partners in crime there. So yes, the cessation of hostilities agreement was breached by Abiy who launched an offensive. The offensive was off to a bad start and it's, un, it's just, it's not, this hasn't just unraveled. Even the, reform, the reinforcements that have, been, that have been sent to reverse the gains that our forces have made uh, have, been effectively, have been effectively dealt with. And uh, the engagement still continues, by the way. So whether that was the original intention or not, uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't tell, but uh, most of northern Wollo is now in the hands of our forces. Uh, if the, the engagement, the desperate efforts to to stop, uh, to send reinforcements or to, to try to undo our gains will continue, will continue, will continue to take appropriate measures. And that exactly will determine where we'll end up. But the most important concern for us is to ensure that there is little or no threat uh, that is going to be posed against the uh, safety and security of the people of Tigray. Whether it comes from uh, east or north or west or south is of second importance to us. What matters is whether we can ensure the safety and security of our people and we'll do it peacefully, if possible, uh, through the military means like uh, uh, what we are doing now, if necessary. This is pretty much where uh, our positions are. Uh, by the way, uh, 
There is a, uh, another sick joke that uh, historical Ethiopia's histor uh, historic enemies are sending plain loads of uh, weapons um, to TPF Tigray. And that uh, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces uh, have uh, downed a plane. It turns out, uh, depending on who, who says what, uh, there probably are three planes downed by the, the, downed by the Ethiopian Def the National Defense Forces. And uh, the Field Marshal Brahanu Jula uh, had the audacity to tell us the plane that was downed was an Anton of 26 or something kind of plane. The Air Force uh, chief came out and said he would uh, furnish video evidence, but they, they, they wouldn't give a hoot whether people would ask them that question again. They don't have any video evidence because it didn't happen. They don't have any video evidence because that plane, that mysterious plane, didn't show up. Uh, why are they doing... Uh, so one of them said, the National Security Advisor said it was uh, down in Malawi while uh, unloading, and unloading its payload. And it, it begs... Uh, <laughs> it begs the question how a plane that was uh, unloading its, its, the weapons it was carrying would be down by uh, uh, an Air Force attack. It's just this mind boggling. And one of the officials apparently claimed that uh, it was down while trying to cross uh, the Sudanese border to, to, to right. And another uh, second rate official, I should say, uh, second tier official, also said it was down in Shararo. Uh, I would advise my uh, erstwhile friends and comrades uh, to at least try and uh, find a, a sort of a common story that would uh, involve some element of deniability. It's very unfortunate they don't have the appetite to to even ensure the constituency of the constant lying that uh, has become their modus operandi. Uh, the thing is, why are they insisting on, you know, this is the same day they launched an offensive. Uh, they're complaining that these are the very people who internationalized the conflict by inviting Eri the Eritrean regime, by inviting the Somalis to, uh, to, to, to be part of the campaign against Tigray, using Emirati drones, you know, all kinds of assortment of uh, regional militias uh, to attack Tigray. And now, they have to find some kind of boogeyman that uh, they knew they were losing uh, grounds in, 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 uh, because their offensive was off to a bad start. Uh, and then all of a sudden they would want to hoodwink the Ethiopian people that if it wasn't for the support of Ethiopia's historic enemies, then they would not have lost ground. Well, I hope this time around the people of Ethiopia would, uh, would uh, say no to... Uh, such cheap tricks by, by a regime that has perfected lying into an art form. This time around, it's unraveling. Even the art form is, is uh, getting shakier. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, there was no plane. That mysterious plane wasn't downed by the Ethiopian Air Force. Uh, and the, the attempt was simply to internationalize international the conflict and to blame the loss on the support to TPLA or Tigray government of, of uh, uh, so-called Ethiopia's historic enemies, namely probably Egypt and Sudan. Uh, I hope the Egyptian and Sudanese authorities will uh, uh, speak for themselves as far as uh, such a claim is made, uh, is, 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 is concerned. Uh, the airstrike and another reason, we believe, uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the reason why they had to come up with the apocryphal plain story was to justify a blanket carpet sort of bombing, if they can. Uh, I think they have uh, the intention, whether they have uh, the planes to conduct a carpet bombing will remain to be seen, but that's their intention in a way. And so they wanted to justify sort of pre-justify, as it were, uh, their decision to carpet bomb Tigray, uh, civilian installations. And as it was made abundantly clear, 
was it it was attack a kindergarten kill children and claim the same day that was a smoking gun they said they'd be hitting targets military targets and they called on the people of Tigray to evacuate areas and they didn't mention those areas so they were telling the people of Tigray that they were a fair game for any plane attack. They were a fair target for any plane attack. So the story, the apocryphal story of the plane, the, the plane carrying weapons being downed by the Ethiopian Air Force was meant to justify, uh, as it turned out, of course, that, that proved to be the case, to justify any carp carpet bombing against civilians in Tigray. There is no military installation in, in that particular kindergarten, not even within kilometers. And the smoking gun was the government issued a statement that they would continue to attack positions and that they would call on Tigrayans to evacuate the areas. In fact, the chief of staff, Marshal Prahanu Jula, had the audacity to come out in public and call on the people of Tigray to leave Tigray en masse and probably join, uh, join the Prosperity Party in Wollo and Afar in other parts of the country so they could avoid being targeted, being, being killed along with TPLF and the Tigray forces. It's, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's probably the most uh, tragicomic situation we find ourselves in. A chief of staff calling on the people of Tigray to evacuate Tigray proper, so they would not be targets. And they are telling us in plain terms that they will be ready to attack every civilian installation in Tigray, no matter what the circumstances. It's very unfortunate. And now, what has the international community done? You know, there have been some perfunctory statements about the two sides uh, uh, um, calling on the two sides to exercise restraint, to call on the two sides to uh, cease hostilities immediately. And with regard to the attack against defenseless children in a kindergarten, there was little in the way of uh, condemnation of the regime which conducted it. Maybe they are doing it in the interest of peace. That's what they keep saying, because they don't want to push Abi and his government into the corner. Some of them would, would tell us that they want to save Abi and uh, uh, they would do it at the expense of uh, Tigrayan children. Uh, they are a bit alarmed that the Russians would, would, uh, would, would uh, convince African leaders to join them. So rather than losing Abi to the Russians, they would rather allow him to, to kill uh, and maim children and get away scot free. I mean, these are the kinds of things that, that uh, come to our mind. Why is the international community not doing enough? Well, obviously, it has failed to cry. We still are grateful to what the international community has done to highlight the plight of the people of Tigray. Uh, especially uh, the international humanitarian community has been in the forefront of not only exposing the crimes that have been uh, committed against the people of Tigray, but also trying to uh, secure support, humanitarian and other, or otherwise, for the people of Tigray. We're, we're, we're grateful uh, to that. But uh, the fact that in the diplomatic area, uh, the international community is ready to be taken for a ride when Abi uh, makes gestures after six months of uh, obstructing peace, he makes what seemingly good gestures for peace, and then he would be welcomed as if it was a, a, a great breakthrough. But uh, people like us who have been calling for peace for six months would still be considered uh, recalcitrant if we are defending our positions. That's very unfortunate. And if that's not failing Tigray, I don't think anything will be. Uh, so... Uh, the international community, we're not, going to, we're not going to squarely blame the international community for everything. And obviously, Abi uh, uh, wants to take the international community uh, for a ride, but 
with things, circumstances that are unfolding. For example, the movement of uh, Ethiopian troops to Eritrea. Uh, it's anybody's guess uh, whether another uh, offensive is going to be launched by uh, a joint Ethiopian and Eritrean force in the uh, northern part of the country. It has nothing to do with securing the interest of Ethiopia. It has nothing to do with protecting the interest of Amhara or Afar. It has everything to do with um, evening an old score or finishing up finishing off uh, TPLF and Tigray, the people of Tigray. And unless the international community takes it upon itself to, to expose uh, such shenanigans, such obvious uh, uh, anti-peace uh, and belligerent behavior on the part of uh, uh, regimes which have shown their readiness to use every opportunity to unleash they are dogs of war, and then obviously the international community will have decided, uh, must have decided to not just abandon the people of Tigray, but also to send the entire Horn of Af Africa region aflame. Uh, because what uh, Isaias is doing is to destabilize the entire region, not just to even all scores with uh, TPLF or with the Tigray leadership or with the people of Tigray. Everything he does. Uh, is about underwriting terror, underwriting confusion, underwriting chaos in the Horn of Africa region. And to allow Abi uh, uh, and Isaias to get away with their uh, bloody adventure is to, uh, to unwittingly uh, promote the disintegration of the Horn of Africa itself. Uh, and that I would say the responsibility will be, should be laid under the international community's feet. Uh, it behooves the international community to take appropriate measures, to call out actors on what they have miserably failed, and to still call the Abi and expect him to, uh, to, 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 to uh, sue for peace uh, would not be only naive, but also uh, that would amount to the height of irresponsibility. As far as we're concerned, peace is not just in our strategic interest. We want to feed our people. We need to feed our people. We need to make sure that basic necessities, basic services are restored in Tigray. And we would be, and we are the last per people, the last government, the last entity to provoke another round of hostilities. Even as we defend our positions and uh, continue to mop, to do a mop-up operations against uh, those who came to attack us and the reinforcements that are being sent uh, every other hour by uh, Abiy Ahmed, we are still ready uh, uh, to go back to the drawing board and uh, try and resolve uh, this, this uh, uh, conflict peacefully. And let the international community be clear that it's not uh, Tigray, which is standing in the way of peace, but Abiy Ahmed and his partners in crime, uh, especially the Eritrean regime, who are now trying to further escalate uh, the crisis by opening another front and by trying and uh, break the Tigray people's resistance. And as far as um, our uh, strong uh, spirit of resistance is concerned, uh, our people, uh, once again, and our forces, once again, have proven they are metal. Uh, they are not interested in uh, aggression against the people of Amhara. They are not interested in aggression against the people of Afar. They are not interested in the aggression against the people of Eritrea. We are only interested in making sure that our people uh, be given the chance to exercise their full measure of self-determination right and will be more than willing to pay our li to put our our lives on the line to make sure that this indeed uh, is the case and uh, yeah we are fighting a defensive war uh, we will remain uh, open for any negotiations uh, as long as uh, the people who have unleashed their dogs so far in the hope that they could subdue the people of Tigray into submission uh, realize that uh, their mission uh, to fight their way out of uh, crisis and to, to fight their way into Ma'ala is not going to work that much. 
they should understand that much the international community should understand as far as our forces and the people of Tigray are concerned it didn't happen yesterday it's not happening today it will not happen tomorrow well with regard to the outrageous claim by uh, the WFP executive director that our forces have uh, stolen or uh, the Tigray government has stolen uh, fuel tankers uh, all I can say is uh, that uh, we have had a very productive and good working relationship with WFP uh, for a long time now. And we are grateful to what WFP and other UN organizations and other uh, humanitarian organizations have achieved with regard to feeding our people, uh, reaching out to the needy, even when the circumstances were particularly dire. Uh, what... Uh, the timing and the, the intensity of, uh, or the passion with which uh, Executive Di Director David Beasley uh, attacked us uh, raises so many questions. Executive Director Beasley had never uttered a word, not even a single word, when four months ago, after the cessation of hostilities agreement, Afar militia forces probably at the behest of Abiy Ahmed attacked WFP trucks destined for Tigray and ransacked w WFP cargo in a manner that would shock the conscience of any sane people, let alone the executive director of WFP itself. He didn't say a word. He didn't say anything. And he, unfortunately, has hardly shown the level of passion that he uh, displayed in attacking the theft by our uh, government of, of fuel that duly belongs to us throughout the 20 something months blockade. I'm not saying the WFP has not been a very reliable partner as far as uh, provision of aid is concerned. And I'm, I'm not blaming uh, David Beasley for uh, anything other than. Uh, his very unfortunate choice of words and totally uncalled for characterization of our acts. Having said that, uh, if stealing was something we would, uh, we had pro proclivities for, we would have stolen WFP resources in Kombolcha when we assigned a division to protect WFP warehouses, there was, despite a clear and realistic possibility of people, starving people in, in that part of Amhara uh, to ransack WFP warehouses. Even fighters whose parents were not able to feed themselves in Tigray because Abiy Ahmed imposed a siege took upon themselves to protect warehouses that belong to WFP and CRS. So if we had those, the proclivities to steal the stuff, we would have stolen hundreds of thousands of uh, food, quintals of food, tons of food in Kombolcha and other parts of the country. So we worked with WFP. To facilitate, and one of the things, one of the arrangements we have, we work very closely with WFP we, we, in Ocha, higher officials included, and we have a very good working relationship with them. And we're not complaining about WFP in the first place. One of the things we had agreed was because there was a lack of fuel, we loaned fuel, about six hundred something thousand liters of fuel to WFP, so it can distribute food not only to Tigray but also to Amhara. And Afar, that much. I tell you, this is clearly put in an agreement in, in correspondences that have been exchanged between uh, the part of the government of Tigray that is in charge of fuel and uh, WFP officials here. So we say simply demanded what's rightfully ours, because our hospitals are running out of uh, diesel generators. We cannot operate on s dying children simply because we don't have access to fuel. And there is an absolute blackout in Tigray. And what, what, why would it be quite strange for Governor Bisley, 
for the government of Tigray to demand the fuel that it has loaned to the WFP because it wants and it needs to run its hospitals because Tigray is under absolute blockade and Tigray is under absolute blackout. He should have asked his own people in Magala, he should have asked his own people even in Rome to understand what was going on and what uh, really went on. But unfortunately, I'm not going to psychoanalyze his, his, uh, his, his motive or anything, but the fact that such an outrageous accusation was leveled against us when Abiy was attacking our positions, was launching an offensive and defending our positions simply speaks volumes about uh, where uh, these people's loyalties are. So they, it took the attention away, not from the invasion that was being visited upon us, not away from the offensive that was launched against our forces. It put the attention squarely on something that should not have merited any media attention in the first place, because it could have been resolved with close uh, discussion with uh, WFP officials here and uh, Tigray trade industry bureau officials here. But they chose to blame the victim for uh, spurious reasons. So obviously, it would say something about their loyalties there. Having said that, as outrageous as a claim that we stole fuel is, there is another more outrageous claim they made. They said they have never borrowed fuel from us. And again, in, in similar vein, they would admit that they had already made payments for the, the 550,000 or 600,000 liters of fuel they have loaned from us. So they deny to have loaned fuel from us, but at the same time they claim to have made a payment on account of the, 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 the fuel they loaned from us. What's particularly more strange is not the self-contradiction, the apparent self-contradiction in the two claims, that they haven't loaned from fuel from us, and that they have paid payment, made payment on account of fuel they took from us. What's more outrageous is the fact that they say they have made a payment to a certain Yemane, probably uh, owner of uh, uh, a fuel depot or something, on account of something, some fuel that they got from us, from the government of Tigray. Why would WFP Addis Ababa decide to make a payment to someone on account, of some, on account of something, some fuel that was loaned to them by the government of Tigray. So obviously there is something fishy about the claims they are making. And I would call on Governor Bisley to really focus on what, what is going on in, 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 in the WFP, especially in Addis Ababa. Whether, I mean, it's one thing to, to be self-contradictory, to claim that you haven't borrowed fuel, and to say that you have made a payment on account, of, on account of a fuel you've borrowed, although you have claimed not to have borrowed it, that's one thing. But to say that the payment was made to someone who has never had anything to do with this transaction would raise a number of questions. So for the interest of uh, ensuring the integrity of WFP itself, it would behoove uh, Governor Beasley to ask the right questions, whether those payments were made uh, legally or illegal. Obviously, they were not made legally because you cannot make payments to someone who hasn't provided, supplied anything. So it was us who supplied the fuel. We loaned this, the fuel. And if payment was ever going to be made, it should have been made to us, but we didn't ask for payments because the, our agreement was for them to return in kind. And uh, yes, but uh, at least uh, the executive director of WFP managed to take the attention away from Abiy's offensive against Tigray. And the international community was seized with this false apocryphal claim of a fuel theft, no matter how outrageous that claim was. But the point is, WFP officials here know what, what happened, and even WFP officials Rome really understand it, UN OCHA really knows it, 
Uh, and whatever differences we have, we are ready to resolve those differences in close coordination with WFP here. And we remain grateful to what WFP has achieved over the years, especially in protecting the people of Tigray. Otherwise, uh, I don't think uh, uh, Governor Bisley was particularly uh, sympathetic to the cause of WFP itself. And he, uh, I would say, uh, should have long recused himself from that particular issue. And it doesn't look good when uh, the executive director of a very celebrated humanitarian org organization uh, to try and take uh, side on a, a very sensitive political issue that has far-reaching far, far reaching ramifications uh, for the uh, peace and stability of in the, in the entire Africa, the entire Horn of Afri Africa region. And it is mm, very unbecoming of a humanitarian you know, to try and take sides uh, on such a, uh, such a conflict. It's very unfortunate, but that's pretty much what happened. Thank you.